team, Madison Merritt. Mother is a typical old lady. Doesn't know how to turn off caps lock, thinks I'll respond to her emails, and loves putting pepper on her cantaloupe. <laughs> <laughs> and also quilting. And at first, this hobby benefited me, so I liked it. But after five consecutive Christmases where I've specifically asked for Taco Bell gift cards and received a quilt instead, <laughs> I'm kind of over it. <laughs> but it turns out, Beefy five-layer burritos are not the only thing that we hold above crafted products. We hold just about everything above crafts. A craft or an item that involves skill in making something by hand is not valued as art. America's lack of craft excitement is damaging the way we view non-Western cultures and women's work. In order to understand why, we will navigate our way through the causes, effects, and solutions like an overwhelmingly poorly planned church craft fair. With only $20 in our pockets, 10 minutes to spare, and a yearning to uncover the truth. I received a shrinky dink when I turned seven, or last year. And although my mom put out my creations all over the house, the Museum of Modern Art denied that my work was in fact bitchin' like that Picasso shit. <laughs> There are two causes of the division of arts and craft. First, racist and sexist Greeks. And second, our focus on the aesthetics of innovation. First culprit, Plato, great philosopher, better lover. But not for me, because I'm a lady. And not 12. <laughs> <laughs> According to the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy, on June 22nd, 2014, while the Greek word for art is techne, Plato labeled the things we traditionally think of as craft, cooking, weaving, pottery, things traditionally done by women and slaves as imperia, meaning knack, decreasing its value. To help explain this, I'd like to introduce you to a friend. Plato! Plato! <laughs> <laughs> All right, Plato, I've just got one question for you. Why is this considered art? But this is considered craft. Well, we're both created by a white dude with a penis? No! Wow. Plato, your idea of art is the same as my dad's ideal child. <gasps> <laughs> both super damaging. <laughs> Second, innovation. It's bold, it's new, it's exciting, it's blue. I have no idea if it's blue or not. But according to a TED Talk, published on March 6, 2015, by art historian Laura Morelli, she found that Western cultures decided that the presence of innovation in a piece determined if it was art or not. By this logic, me shouting random made-up words is more artistic than Shakespeare. Smurf yard! That's a graveyard for Smurfs! Innovation is neat. <laughs> However, in almost every other culture, the goal of art was to preserve visual tradition, and the distinction between art and craft had never existed. <coughs> now, instead of talking about the effects, or is it affects, effects, affects, 
Anyways, instead of talking about them, I just decided to make a collage of colleges. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I've been really struggling with homophones recently. Wow! Call me Martha Stewart, because I didn't just craft that joke. I crafted for that joke. <laughs> All right, let's talk about some effects. First, the loss of social value of craft, and second, the marginalization of women and non-Western culture's work. First, crafts are for people who want to express themselves but can't write slam poetry. <laughs> crafts are also functional pieces of art. You can do actual things with them. Can you carry gallons of water back to your village with the starry night? No. Can the girl with the pearl earring keep you warm through the bitter cold winter? Absolutely not. Can you take a hot pan of pizza rolls out of the oven with the Mona Lisa? Yes! <coughs> Is that the best use for the Mona Lisa? Maybe. <laughs> to look at new lifestyles and cultures. According to the Medfield Press on September 11, 2015, crafts are one of the best ways to maintain cultural traditions while also earning money for local economies and community institutions. For example, my school's Meninist organization had their own craft fair. And for $15, they would insult your craft. And for an extra five, tell you to calm down. <laughs> Second, by deeming an item as craft, we are essentially saying we are continuing the legacy of devaluing women and non-Western culture's contributions to the art world. Morelli asked the question, why do we consider a painting by Monet and da Vinci art, but not an African mask? Answer, racism. <laughs> According to a project <laughs> titled Gallery Tally, created by Nicole Hebron in 2013, he found that in local galleries, only 33% of art was created by people of color, and only 34% was created by women. The craziest part about this whole thing is that a piece can be considered art if a white man does it instead of someone else. We see this with crocheting. Although it's considered craft now because it's women's work, it was actually invented as art by pirates who would fall hook first into piles of yarn. Not sure why there's so much yarn scattered around their ships. <laughs> now I figured I could solve this problem <laughs> like I solve any other crafted problem with hot glue. <laughs> but after trying, people still thought crafts were lame and everything just got really sticky. <laughs> so let's look at some real solutions. First, we need to promote efforts that preserve women and non-Western cultures' work. And second, we need to embrace our inner craftivist. First, we need to promote efforts that preserve work created by women and non-Western cultures. We can do this by visiting galleries where the female representation isn't just naked and on a canvas. Don't be afraid to walk up to that cute little old curator and ask, where the hell are all the minority artists? It's also important to, to exp it's also important to appreciate It is also important <laughs> to appreciate local and international crafted products. This is not only important in increasing the exposure of these items, but can be vital in helping to sustain the communities that create them. While the racks of Forever 21 are filled with the tears of a million Chinese children, <laughs> it's nice to be able to buy something that promotes fair labor practices, which crafts do. And according to a speech by John Kerry on September 10th, 2015, regarding the artisan empire, these items have the potential to improve the lives of the individuals who make them. Second, we need to embrace our inner craftivist. Kindergartners do it. Sorority girls do it too much. <laughs> Most of the non-Western world does it. So why should they get to have all the fun? Craft with your friends. Craft with your parents. Craft with your date. Craft alone when your date says that he doesn't want anything to do with your crafts. The point is. <laughs> There are plenty of crafts out there for you to find something that you're good at. 
So whether you are molding something out of clay that will hold liquid, making something out of two sticks and some yarn that will keep you warm, or making jewelry out of noodles, your skill is unique and important. Everyone needs a legitimate mode of expression. And until we learn to value crafts just as much as art, we are telling some people that their expressions are not as valuable as others, despite its usefulness and roots in important tradition. As we examine the causes, effects, and solutions of the division of art and craft, we see that we need to take crafts more seriously, especially witchcraft. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't nobody got time to become a frog. <laughs> in the spirit of this speech, I decided to ask my grandmother for another quilt. But this one's a little more practical. It's for my burritos. <laughs> <laughs>